Hey everyone, it's Rick and Mary back. Good morning. We're uh, doing a husband and wife Bible study, as you know, and it's really important for you to subscribe. And um, if you notice, he has the same shirt on every week because he thinks it's so cool that he can say subscribe. <laughs> Off my shirt. Um, they don't care. They want us to study scripture. The they, they may care. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, we're back. Now the Lord has come out of the wilderness, which is a picture of Exodus 19 and 20. Um, please go read those and kind of um, study them and ask the Lord for direction as you study. The reason is it's going to be very important because we're going to show uh, in the video after this that the Lord is the same God on Mount Sinai as he is on the Mount of Beatitudes. And what he's doing is giving a master's class in how to study the Bible in uh, Matthew 5. So that's something that we want to pay attention to. I have a question before we get into that. Um, do we, with the temptation of Christ, um, do we know... Was did Satan was Satan aware that Christ was the Son of God? That's a very interesting question, and there is a section in Bible Study Company, and Mary will put a little blue um, dot up there or box. It's a box called Background, just above every single chapter, and in the background, Doctor Constable shows that by the Greek construction that he did know. Um, because it was my same question. Well, and I think it'd be so. I think it'd be really good for you to do a um, a little side video on the background of um, Dr. Constable's um, book that he's so graciously allowed us to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we'll do that. We'll yeah, do look that look for that. It'll look be for a that bonus be coming one. up. It'll be something that that we'll do soon. Mm -hmm. Or that Rick will do. I think it's, I think it'd be better for you to do it. It's more a theological type. Yeah. It's it's interesting. I use it a lot um, for my study. Yeah, because you can click on background and then go straight down to um, Matthew four and a, and a particular right. verse and look at it. It's really good stuff. So um, and he was the president of Dallas Theological Seminary for a long time. Yeah. So um, what we're doing today is because the Lord was coming out of the wilderness, um, there are certain things that he's now starting his ministry. And we have to pay attention because remember, we're followers of Christ. He is the Son of God and he wants us to follow him. For example, when you see Son of Man and he's walking now, he's the Son of Man walking that's what we're supposed to be doing. When you see him praying, that's what he wants to communicate to us. He wants to, to pray. Now, I will, we, oh, wait a minute, we've got to pray oh, yeah. and ask the Lord for help. We're kind of excited about this, so um, forgive us. And by the way, grab your beverage, whatever you have. I just have water, um, coffee out when you just have water oh, too, right? But mine has a lemon in it and ice. Does anybody know what the lemon has to do with anything? You don't have ice or... What was that? You don't have ice or any lemon or anything in yours. Okay. Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> okay. I do. <laughs> Obviously. So, um, anyway. Sorry. You threw, <laughs> you threw me <laughs> out. Sorry. Okay. Let's pray. Yeah. Um, Father, we just want to lift up to you. We're studying your word to give honor to you, but we also want to study your word to get to know you because you are unknowable um, God who could create and speak the universe into existence and, and us as well. And you hand, you hand formed us, uh, knitted us together, um, which is really an interesting picture of how DNA works. But we want to um, uh, recognize that you're our creator and that we want to get to know you and and therefore grow in our faith and our knowledge of you you help us with going through trials and testing and which we can see in scripture so that grows our faith because we can depend upon you instead of ourselves because that's where we came from 
is is um, uh, being a part of this world system, therefore being a part of uh, poor thinking, and you're trying to give us good thinking through your objective word of God. And so we we can't do that without your wisdom, but we want our motive to learn to respond to you and to live a praiseworthy life. And so we thank you so very much. In, and, and we get to take this knowledge that we have into heaven. And it's just great. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's really cool what you said about the, um, the, you know, he knit us in our mother's womb and the connection with the DNA because it looks like, I mean, in my mind right away, it looks like yarn knit together. It's really neat. Well, they've they've had some videos where these proteins walk along and they put everything together. It looks like knitting. Yeah, it's really and the Bible's not doesn't make a mistake. Mm-hmm. So you're a piece of knit. <laughs> They're, a beautiful piece of yarn. Yeah. Is that is there any more joke you could say? No, I'm just saying with lots of holes and um, worn areas, but it's made from God. So. That's right. Yep. So, and by the way, that's a really good point that Mary brought in. You're going to start to see that the Lord Jesus starts coming under attacks. Um, We'll talk about that. But, you know, the thing is, is that we're a collection of beat up, um, you know, whatever we've had going on in our lives. If we'll come to the Lord and and say, you know what, Lord, I got nothing. I'm tired of um, what I've learned. Please teach me your word and heal me at the same time and he, what we've tried to communicate is he actually comes into our life and does that yeah he does what he what he did to the disciples he said hey come follow me right so and he and you're going to see him keep his eyes on the father and mary has a really good interesting point to make in fact you know what i'm going to have you make it right now because um i think we were talking about Abraham because the disciples, you'll see um, in a little bit that they're acting like um, Abraham when they leave their father to become disciples because that's what Abraham did. And so you made a comment, which I thought was profound and I hadn't even thought of it. Uh, and I like the perspective a great deal. So why don't you share the what you thought about what the Lord Jesus had? Did that set you up are enough? You, are you talking about when about the connection of the Lord leaving His home? Yep, yep. Yeah, I, we were t- we were talking about um, Go ahead. Abraham, um, and then Christ coming in um, to to the disciples, and they were disciples of John the Baptist, the two, the, the two that two of them anyway. Um, and I was saying, isn't that interesting? He's Christ has come from His home in heaven down to us and telling us to follow him just like he told Abraham to to leave and follow leave his home yeah leave Father. his home and he's asking the disciples to leave their home not really telling them what you know where they're going to be going just says, follow me and I'll I'll show you um and then I got thinking about because I'm always thinking about the, the earthly and the and the kingdom or the spiritual and I thought what a what a good example that the the Lord left His spiritual home, and came down, and He also left it, left His physical home when they when He left Nazareth and went to Gal to Galilee, mm-hmm. and um, how just what an example everything that He does is such an example to us of what we can do and we can do it through Him. So that to me that's the He came down and brought His home here so that we can grasp and live in this earthly world all broken and us uh, sinful but live um knowing that we're going to be going back to our home which is his home in heaven right. so i just think that's really cool well and i and i think that is a great way to open up i know i have a really hard time describing what i mean when i'm you know like i said when i'm doing these podcasts it's uh, sometimes difficult for me to describe and try to get across what I really, what I really mean. But I think it's needed because we have the, you know, we have you who's very um, weird. Well, you're you're very a very deep thinker, and so am I. But you're very theological and very good at remembering scripture. I'm not 
good at remembering it, remembering it by saying it, but I have it in here. So trying to describe for the people who are like me and then the people that are like you to balance that out is important. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to describe it. Um, so, so right now, the Lord comes off, as I said, he comes off of the wilderness, which is like Exodus in, in, the, in the desert. So he's, he's identifying. The biggest mark here is Matthew in his gospel. Now, each of the gospels try to teach something different about the life of the Lord. We'll see that in just a few minutes. But the thing that's really interesting to me is Matthew's trying to show that he is the king, the coming king, the Messiah. The problem is typically people are anointed from um, a flask of oil um, and it represents the Holy Spirit. Christ at his baptism, as we saw, was anointed from heaven through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that is what is really neat about this, is that he's, because um, he's not um, just a man. He is the Lord, the God who created a body for himself, and he is, and he's living in there. Being born of a virgin means he's experienced everything that we have. And so this, that's what's exciting to us. He's born from heaven, um, you know, coming from heaven, um, born from heaven, if you want to say it that way. So we're willingly, we're, willingly, willingly choosing to come to earth from heaven. Yep, yep, as Mary said, and from his home. So, so now uh, the, the verse right here in 12, so I'll just read it. And it says, now, when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee. Now, there's a transition here. And leaving Nazareth. And he came and settled in, in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali. So let's break this verse down um, with the transition, 12 and 13. So um, we see what John prophesied in other uh, of the Gospels that he was going to decrease because his job was to point to Christ. He was the only person that we can see from Scripture that was ever born with the Holy Spirit. So um, anyway... You're talking about when he le leapt in his mother's... Correct. And that's what the Scripture says, yeah. So, um, so this has got to be sad for the Lord, but he knows what's net waiting for John. He knows the, the problems that they're going, he's going to face. And so, uh, but the issue is that what Mary said in 12 was, um, the question is, he withdrew into Galilee. Now, I want to bring this up because Galilee is in northern Israel. It, Galilee is a lake that's at the head, um, one of the headwaters. Mount Hermon's actually the headwaters, which is above that. Um, out, out of the middle of the mountain comes the Jordan, uh, and the Sea of Galilee is full of life and fish and all that, and then it goes down towards the Dead Sea. So it's a very good picture of life and death. But it also, in within the word, it buries the word government, and it also buries the word um, revelation. So he's up in Galilee and there was a lot of Gentiles. And what's wonderful about this, this is, I think this is one of the first signals in scripture that he's going after the Gentiles. And we see him in his ministry engaging the Gentiles and they're coming to faith in him more than in some cases than the children of Israel. And so for us, that's really, important. He's actually doing what um, the Jewish people were supposed to do. Correct. And the problem is the Pharisees had trained them to walk clean before the Lord. And that is true, um, to walk clean before the Lord, ritually clean, so that they could go into the temple and do their duties and do all this stuff. But he, they wanted to pass that on to the people. The problem is Gentiles were unclean, so coming in contact with them would make them unclean. So here you have man's um, sort of legalism, commentary. Man's opinion. Correct. Because of who was the first man's opinion that, that said that 
um, the Gentiles were unclean. Right, because I don't think that's even in Scripture. Right, they, I mean, they do unclean things. Right, but I mean, that's the, my whole point, is that if, if, they, if the Lord made them to be an example and to go after them, then how is that unclean that in a in a physical sense but they they have the same spirit that they do and it's broken and it needs to be fixed by the lord so um right that's what i mean it's you know you know you know that's a, that's a, that's to me one of the not one of the first but it's an indication of that it's man, man's opinion right so i want to make two points here um you can help me with the the, the um, food laws because this is something that's really interesting. We can go to church and we can uh, pick up man-made laws, and you have to be very careful with those man-made laws. Like, for example, a friend of mine was talking about he nobody should come to church not dressed to the max. And I asked him where he got that because he was upset about somebody who came to church very casual. In Florida, we're very casual. California, I'm presuming, might be the same. But but I said, where did you get that? And he said, well, my parents kind of taught it. And it turns out he went to a very formal Baptist church. But the thing is, as I said, if you think about it, it is, um, that's a man-made rule. That's not a biblical rule. And so that's the things that we have to sort through in our lives and make sure that whatever teaching you're getting, you study it yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't come to conclusions. Um, and we can do that with a host of different doctrines and, and uh, thoughts and, and everything. Um, now, the next thing, it just dawned on me, the, the, um, the Lord didn't wash his hands and you know the Pharisees challenged him on that. What's really interesting is the Lord said, whatever you take in doesn't make you unclean. Um, but what's what comes out of the mouth that makes somebody unclean. And, and so the interesting thing about that is it just dawned on me that one of the things about the food laws is it, the Lord said, these are the food laws. And um, we're not talking about keeping food laws here. But it dawned on me that I think the Pharisees had projected onto the Gentiles because they didn't eat the way they did and see again that they were unclean by what they ate. And the Lord wanted them to know that what they took in, um, what they took in from the world, their, the sin came out of their mouths. And that's what we really well, have to and watch also what, for. What, they took in, what you take in from the world um, you're gonna, if you're in a in a space where you're um, already inwardly sinning or desiring something, um, it's gonna cause you to take in from the world something that's not clean or that's not. Um, yeah, and I'll give you an example. I was telling Mary because we we try to tell each other any things that come come into our life that are that are unclean or immoral. And it was really interesting that they, they, this game was, was about shooting submarines or something. And, and I kept getting advertisements. So I thought, well, I'll just take a look at it. So I take a look at it, not knowing anything. But then the women that were projected onto the, for, and I couldn't even figure out why they were on there. They were scantily clad. Mm -hmm. And it was like, boy, I took that right off. I don't want to see that. I blocked the screen. You know, so, um, yeah, it's, you got to protect, young men, you have got to protect your eyes. So um, we've got, we've got our, um, we've got everything we need in our wives. Well, so that young men who don't have wives also need you to, have protect to do their, that. Yep. protect their eyes and, and do what, um, you know, they're, they're called to do was, which is to be um, respectful of, of all God's creation. Right. Um, so back to Matthew. Um, the interesting thing is Matthew is trying to show that he's a king um, of Israel coming, as we said, and he's also fulfilling prophecy. Those are the two big things we need to know. So God is a God of promises, and he's also a God of fulfilling promises and prophecies. So let's pay attention to that because that helps us grow in our faith in him. If if he gives us a, a gives us 
something in our lives or a word out of scripture and you're you know you need a, a promise of some kind um you know trust in the word so that's what the lord is trying to say and uh, especially today because events are coming globally and most of the prophecies in the bible old and new testament um, are around, centered around global events and so just keep watching so that's that's a big thing but anyway um, he was the king from heaven and that's what caused everybody big problems and so one of the things that he said here is um, so he's coming for revelation and that's Galilee and he's coming to be the ruling king and leaving Nazareth is a question that Mary had of why is that transition there? What is leaving Nazareth? Now, to answer this question, understand that this is a historical narrative, and so it's giving you facts in a sense, but it's not filling in a lot of the, a lot of the details and drama. We have to ask the Holy Spirit for those, or we go to Scripture and interpret Scripture. That's another biblical study and principle. Mm -hmm. So we would have to go over and compare the Gospels. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting to me... Which I encourage you to do. Remember, Nazareth was their hometown, and um, there's a whole... You could study Nazareth and understand that it goes back to a root and a shoot, and he's the root and the shoot. Um, and so what's really neat is... Um, he goes there in Luke 4. It's really interesting. Just read the story. And what happens is he goes into the temple, and uh, or, the, or the synagogue rather, and he opens up the Isaiah scroll. And he reads that basically he's come. And so again, the other gospels are showing that he's fulfilling scripture. And he closes it and sits down. And everybody is astounded by his gracious words and then they go then all of a sudden you see a comma uh, and it goes hey isn't he joseph's son and so mary made really good point because they actually take him out to the brow of a hill cliff um, right near nazareth and you can see the geography you can look it up online but what's really fascinating to me is he had to disappear and go through the crowd um, and did a supernatural miracle there. But here, the people of his own hometown were murderous. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And you had made a really big comment about what happens when we start following Christ. Right, That's what, that happens. We become, um, depending on who your family is, who your friends are, and where they're at, um, they, like, like Christ says, they'll hate you because they hate me. So you'll start experiencing some of the same things that Christ did. Um, who are you to say, you know, you were, you know, little in this little podunk town sinning with the rest of us, and now you're, <laughs> yeah. now you're saying you're saved. And it's just the way it is. It could be family. It could be friends. It could be just co coming into the world and preaching the gospel and somebody that you don't know. It's it's part of the package. Yeah, it, it, it is. And so um, that's one of the things that we want to do, um, talk about in, in our discussion here. So um, the other thing is we need to talk about the region of Zebulon and Nephtali. Now, Nephtali, um, it means graceful, um, graceful hind. And it also, there, you can go on Wikipedia and actually look this up, um, but we, we may get time to um, actually put the definitions into the to, to, to Bible study and you can look it up. But the interesting thing is, is that it, they were in northern Israel. And what's cool about it is, uh, we've talked about this before, uh, Zebulon um, means gift. And so the thing is, is that the Lord is both of those things. He is, um, he's coming to be a gift to mankind, to the people of Israel, and to his, who are his blood and blood now. And so the, the cool part is he's starting to now really preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. 
Did you have a thought on that? I don't want to keep. No, I was just looking up. Um, I was just looking up the nep neptali and oh, good. Trying to trying to figure it out while you were talking about that. So okay, so now um, somebody decided taking this prophecy years before, and I think we've mentioned it um, in other of our podcasts. But the thing that's interesting is somebody read this prophecy and in Israel a number of years before Christ came and said the Messiah is going to come in this region. So he built a town on the Sea of Galilee right on the border of Neb Neb Neftali and Zebulun and it was called Kafar Nahum. Kafar means town. Nahum, the, and we've heard of the prophet Nahum, um, is the town of comfort. And so the Messiah made his home base there. And that is cool. And a good picture of um, of preparing what, ha having faith that what is said in Scripture is going is going is to come. Now, he was, prepared, he was prepared for the Messiah to come. Right. And so here's your challenge. Um, what are you doing to prepare for prophetic events? Now, I'm not talking about prepping. I'm talking about preparing your hearts for the coming of the Lord. And what I mean by that is, how are you, um, what, what is your time? We're going to be accountable. What is, what is your time? I'm talking to myself when I say this. Where are we spending it? Is it productive for the kingdom? Is it not? Is it productive well, serving are, your are spouses? We do, are we doing things that, um, that help us to become a better friend of, of Christ? Yes, exactly. Because if the, if the goal is to do that, I want, I want to know who my Savior is, and I want to be, I want to be a friend of the Lord's, um, then that's going to be a, a good a good way to process how you what you do right exactly so um the what i want to say is the god of the universe who created us who prophesied all of this he's now with us and if an atheist say you're making a claim that god never came or you can't see god jesus christ is a historical figure and Sci and uh, many historians don't doubt that at all, secular or not. They don't doubt it. And anybody that does is not being intellectually honest. And so we have the representative of God on the earth right now. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, and so I push back on their claim all the time. Um, so here's the thing, though. Um, how... It, we, we can believe in prophecy, and 14 says this. This was to fill, fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. And this is the Christ, or through the apostle, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah and is reaching out to the to the Gentiles. He's making his home base there, and he wants to make, in in our lives, he wants to make a home base. Well, and he said the people the people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light, and those who were sitting in the land and shadow of death upon them a light dawned. So what's that? Christ coming? Exactly, I mean, coming. Yep. And and when he comes in our lives. This is a perfect description of what he does. But to understand that, that the 14 is prophetic from... Isaiah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, we can pass over there that not understand that. So it's important for people to know that that is prophetic and that it was, yep. you know, that it was in the word of Isaiah, which makes it more real that, okay, that really is a, pro a prophecy that was fulfilled. Correct. Yeah, it's exciting. Because that was, a, for me, it, it was really um, exciting because um, I don't always remember those types of things. And when I find it out again and, and remember it, it's like, oh, that's right. You know, th this confirms that um, it just kind of blows your mind. 
Yeah, and for people who land on this podcast, we can have confidence in the God who spoke to Isaiah, who's now fulfilling this, um, however many years later, hundreds of years later. And he will do the same coming up soon. So the thing that Mary's talking about is, as a, as a friend of God, um, gr- growing to know him, we can have confidence. And for those who come to this podcast and, and say they read the Bible and they can't get anything out of it, um, that's understandable because one needs to be born again, which is what Christ said in John 3. And, and you need to cry out and ask the Lord to save you and to forgive your sins and learn to how through Scripture to follow him. And that's what we're doing right now is following him into the, into the land of Galilee, and we're learning to follow him to Capernaum. Well, and this is a good, I have said this earlier, but it's a good example of different people being able to still glean from the Bible, um, no matter what your, whatever, no matter what your giftings are, where if you're, um, it doesn't matter if you're dyslexic or if you're, no. um, if you have, you know, a academia brain or an artist brain or anything in between. Um, the, it's that's what's so beautiful about this that the Lord reaches you where you're at, and you can you can grow from that and become a friend of of Christ, which makes you more of a whole person than you could ever be on and, your own. Right, and why he would do this, I don't know, but he's taken sinners like you and me, and he's we've been adopted. If we become born again, we become adopted into the. A fam- family of God. Sorry about that. But what's also really neat is once we become born again, the scripture gets opened up to us by the Spirit of God who's now living within us. And he makes us into new creatures. And those are all scriptures that you'll find once you become born again. So the second question is, if you're not born again, um, please make a comment um, about if you've become born again, or if you're looking to become born again. If you don't understand it, if you want help, right. if you want um, direction, That's exactly any of those right. types of things. Because some people, I think, are just, they're not sure, or they're embarrassed, or they don't want, they're angry about things in their past, and they just don't um, e- even want to go there. Yep. But just having a discussion with people that aren't, I don't want to say that, well, not the appearance of cramming something down someone's throat, some people think, um, and that might not be what people are doing, but that might be where you're at, where somebody's at, and thinking that um, that I don't want to talk to anybody because they're just going to force all this stuff, instead of having a conversation about this is the word of God. That's right. It's not um, anything other than that, and the Lord will do the work for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 exciting. So. And the and the and what the Lord is saying is a light dawned on them. To me, that's a picture of becoming born again, and it is a great light. And that's what exactly what happened to me when I was saved. And the pa- the pastor was in the seventies, and he gave me a little sinner's prayer. And boy, I sincerely prayed that because our family didn't go to church. I didn't even know how to pray. I'm thankful that he did. And boy, when I sat back in the chair, I had no concept of God. And now this light is in the room. In fact, I got in trouble the next day in high school in mechanics class. And I was looking up at the ceiling and the teacher said, Joyner, what are you looking at? And I said, a light. And he goes, well, there's fluorescent lights in the ceiling. And I needed to get back to work on my little lawnmower. But That's another good example of two different people's personalities or how they how they their conversion is because yep. you know for me it was very um a very quiet thing and like i said before i was raised in the catholic church so i knew who christ i knew who christ was and i loved jesus but i didn't understand to the degree of what the gift was that he had for me so mine was very quiet and very um yeah you know so i think some people feel like oh if i'm not i didn't have this great conversion it doesn't mean that you're not saved well 
Well, and I think that's very important because I don't even like the term sinner's prayer because it was a biblical prayer. It's a scriptural prayer. And um, we have that on our website. We, we took, um, you know, scriptures and you can pray through those and really turn, turn your heart through to the Lord. But basically you need to do that. You need to get on your knees and ask the Lord to save you. That's it's a personal thing between yeah. you and yeah. our Savior. That's exactly right. So now we're at verse 17, and it says, From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I want to make this point. When you see something in Scripture, this is, doesn't have to be what you use as a formula everywhere. He was talking to Jewish people who already believed in God, but they were having a hard time processing what they were being taught and so many of them kind of gave up because legalism will do that to you um it's you're just the pharisees taught the scriptures and then they interpreted man's rules over the top of them and then expected other pe the other people to follow them yeah and the lord said you tie up heavy loads on people and don't even help them carry them and, and, and he's saying, my yoke is easy. And what he means is, is that if you depend on the Lord, let him teach you from the scriptures. Because what you learn is way going to be different than the next guy or even what Mary and I learn. So it's very important. Um, and so repentance in Judaism means to turn uh, back to the plans and purposes of God. And so, uh, so, so that's very important. And the kingdom of heaven, and this is the part about the light dawning, the kingdom of heaven will come and rule and reign in your hearts. And so the kingdom of God is within our hearts because we've made him Lord. And we want to make him Lord. We don't do it very well because we're still in these sinful bodies. Mm -hmm. Let's put give our hearts to the Lord and let him teach us and let him be responsible or not responsible for the results, but let him grow us up, right? Right, right. Okay, so any other comments on that? No. Okay, now as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Bingo, right? So Mary had a couple comments of that, but let's go to the Lord saying, and he said to him, to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two more brothers, James the John of Zebedee and John his brother in the boat with Zebedee, their father mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boats and their father and followed him. This is parallel um, scripture to Abraham and the Lord's call in Genesis 12. You can go read that. He left, the Lord called him to leave his fa um, father and family and go to a place, and this is exactly the same. And like I always say, Jesus always gives us an example to go by because Jesus left his father to come to the earth, you yeah. know. Um, I mean, he's God, so he, it's it's a different, it's hard to put our wrap our brain around that. But I, I think that's so awesome that God shows us he does what he wants us to do. He, he gives us, a like I always say, a blueprint of how to go about doing it, and it always involves following him. Right, and here's what's really cool, is um, they left, and that's your your and my call too. It's the exact same call. And the Lord will help us um, be fishers of men, and and because it's the souls of men that we want to have part of the kingdom of God. And so that is... A big deal. Oh, and by the way, you had a question. Do you remember your question without me prompting 
you I'm about sure this. I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the issue is um, John the Baptist. What? How did? Why? Why did they? Um, who were these guys? Did the Lord just pick them random? Right. That was one of your questions. Oh, I think I talked about it in the beginning of this podcast about their hearts being um, at a place where they were they were seeking. They they knew the word and they were seeking who the Messiah was. Who, yeah. who the Messiah was to come. Yeah. And so. And the other the other gospels will show that. Right. And also, I think it's kind of a good for me because I have to think in in word and visuals. Um, is that when when John the Baptist when it said that they um, they took him um, he went in the background and and Christ once Christ was baptized Christ came to the forefront and then it was all about Christ and it's like that's to me a really good picture of our salvation our, our salvation message too that we're you know we die to ourselves we go our our nature, our sin nature, goes into into the background, and we take on a nature of Christ, and that becomes what's um, important to us. And I think a big question that should come up in everybody's mind is, well, how do I practically die to ourselves? And the issue is, in our choices, it's either our will or His will, and that's what Christ wanted to show us because Adam and Eve should have chosen. God's will over their own will to disbelieve God um, in the garden, which brought sin into the, But we have it every day. We can put up our will and our choices um, against what God would want us to do. Right, it's, and, and it's called, like we said, um, becoming a friend of Christ. And when you, when you have a good friend that you trust, um, and he's the savior of the world, I mean, we can go to him every minute daily weekly and um he'll he'll help us to be able to do that that's how we measure i mean i think how, what a loving thing that he wants us to be his friend and he wants to be friends with us he doesn't need us we need him but he wants to be friends with us and he wants us to be part of his family and he has the way for us yeah and he put his um uh, he put he to understand God, he put it in his word, and his will is his word. So we can go to his will and work that out, and the Holy Spirit will help you. Yeah, we have the Holy Spirit within us to do that. It's just amazing. And if you're feeling anxiety about it, put that up to the Lord too. If you have questions, get as honest with him and with other people as you possibly can. Um, be, just be careful not hurting people when, when you're doing it. But Sometimes we can just keep our mouth shut on stuff. So, um, but anyway, all right. So, so now he's getting some disciples, and and um, I like the metaphor of Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, and um, revelation and government. So he's creating a government by um, getting some disciples, and they were looking for the Messiah. That's what Mary was um, sharing. So their mission well, is... Well, those first two men, like they say, we don't, they don't know for sure who... They know what one of... For the, that were being discipled by John the Baptist. Right. They went from him discipling him to the Christ himself. We, we always say, well, it would be so cool to be there on earth, you know, in a wood with, with Christ and see him in bodily form, but we have him with us yep. here. Yep, that's exactly right. So, um, so immediately they left their boat and their father, and Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, meaning the gospel of the kingdom is about him. So they needed to put their faith in him. But here's something very interesting in healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. And this is very important because in when they were in the desert, um, they had no way of, he, of healing themselves. Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. He cured every disease. 
uh, among them. So he is showing them he's the same God in the desert as he was uh, in the wilderness in the Exodus. And so he was having a profound, um, you know, he was trying to let them know that you can put your faith in me because I'm the same God in the desert as I am there. Mm -hmm. And so do you have any comments about that? No, it just says after that, that l large crowds followed him from Galilee and the and the Decapolis and yep. Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Right. And here's the interesting thing is um, that is a picture, again, of the mixed multitude that came out of Egypt. And so you have a huge mixture. And, the, and anybody coming from the Decapolis, most of that is there's 10 cities there. That's why it's called Decapolis, means 10. And cities are you know, um, polis, I think it is. And um, um, as they would say, Jerusalem, um, they came from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So you had the religious, you had the unclean, they, and and you had the ones in between because... So a picture of the world. Perfect. And so what I'm excited about is that this is the same type of mixed multitude that came to the mountain in Matthew 4, uh, or in, in Exodus 19, and Matthew 4 is a picture of that same thing. And now we're going to see in our next podcast that um, the, that the Exodus 20 and Matthew 5 is a picture of the same God on Mount Sinai. And we'll see how the Jewish people reacted then, and we're going to see how we can react today because the, the Lord is tracking down how to respond correctly to Scripture, not create a bunch of rules. Mm -hmm. All Scripture should hit our hearts and reveal our sin motives. Every scripture should. And so that keep that in mind when you're studying. And remember that. Mm -hmm. It's all about the sin motive. And we can have a temperature taker by what comes out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. And what we think about. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. Yep. I didn't add that. Because what's in here comes out here. And that's what the Lord was trying to. And that's what makes us unclean. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, we are right at the marker of time. And so did you want to say anything else about anything? No, nope, I think you should pray us out. Oh, well, I pray to sin. No, you can pray us out. Uh, okay. So everybody, again. I'm the man of the house. <laughs> um, I just have a feeling when you said that I'm the man of the house. But you actually kind of run the house. Well, I run the inside of the house. Okay. Well, uh, speaking of which, I have, me, to, to mumble, <laughs> I have to mow the lawn. I need to clean the house. <laughs> and I have to do this and you know, trim some bushes for you. Okay. So anyway, we want to pray and we want you to like and subscribe. Because seriously, folks, if you don't do that and make comments, um, we, the YouTube logarithm will not send this out to, to people. And it's very important that Bible study in general just get out, especially the gospel. And uh, so please help us with that. And um, and if you want, you can donate, but please don't take away from your church. Um, that's not our, 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 our purpose, right? right? So Father, we ask that your kingdom come and your will be done in, in our lives. And we we desperately ask you if somebody comes here and is not saved we take all of our sins we're so sorry for our sins and we lay them at the cross by faith in you because the cross is a picture of what we should have taken for punishment and what god thinks of sin and so lord you took our sin so i we we give you our sin by faith and we accept the blood of christ covering us with our sin, not with our sin, but covering us to cover our sin. And Lord, you do something remarkable, and that's give us the Lord Jesus' righteousness. And so we, and then, and then you 
get, send us the Holy Spirit to cause us to have the light dawn. And so we ask you to um, cause us to be saved to eternal life. And Lord, we, we do it by faith because um, we don't know what the future is going to hold. I don't know how to clean myself up enough in order to make myself worthy of you. But I know that you died and you shed your blood and you rose again, defeating sin and death. And that was our greatest enemy. And Lord, we thank you that you're that we can be your friend. We can even um, follow you uh, through your word because that's your will. And Lord, I pray for the people um, listening, whatever their ailments are, whatever they're going through, that you would help them come to a saving knowledge of you and, and grow in them. Lord, we just acknowledge we don't have anything. Um, and we ask you as our creator just to take over our life. Um, doesn't mean we take it, we, we take the hand off the wheel. What we do is we just trust in you and you're our friend. And so Lord, we give honor to you and praise for coming on the earth, um, as God and showing yourself to the entire world through the creation. And now you coming and we can't, we won't deny that we put our faith and trust in you and, uh, Lord, we just thank you so very much in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we love. And uh, we say a great big amen. So be it in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Well, thank you, everyone. We are very grateful for you, of, for those that just support us with um, your comments and, mm -hmm. and building a community with us, because that's why Bible study company is called company so that we can build a community. Thank you.